been a couple weeks since I've posted a video, so I thought it's time to post another one to show you my progress, and I have some haul to show you, and all sorts of stuff. So anyway, whip update. I have been working a lot on my treasure hunt bookshelf, artwork by Amy Stewart from Heaven and Earth, and so let me show you what it will look like when it's done. And this is what it looked like last time you saw it. And this is what it looks like now. So as you can see, I actually finished my fifth page. And this page had a lot less confetti in it, which was really nice. Um, the books were fairly easy to stitch, and then I had the lantern and um, this nice sort of illuminated area and this band down here. So it wasn't too bad to stitch. It stitched up pretty quickly. And one thing, I went back to, I stitched cross country, but I did go back to doing some parking because I noticed that after my last um, page there, I can feel a little bit of a seam in the page break. Now, the last full coverage piece that I finished, I only stitched page by page. I never parked outside the page or anything like that. And it came out fine and it it's framed and I can't tell, you know, where the page breaks were. Um, but I started kind of being cautious. <laughs> so, for example, this right here, these are the same colors and a page break kind of goes through the center of it. And so I actually stitched across a page break. I didn't even just park. I just, I kept moving back and forth between pages. Now I use the Goodreader app on my iPad um, and it's not the best for stitching across pages. It's not like the new Pattern Keeper that everybody's talking about, which seems to make um, navigating from page to page and stitching across pages really easy. But, um, you know, I did it anyway, and I'm really happy with it. So I've actually gotten not a ton done, but like this, this column right here is all into the sixth page. And then I've started working a little bit, um, a little bit up here. So anyway, I've got, um, one, two, three, um, four and five and six. So I've, I've done some good progress. And then another thing that I've done is I put it on a new Q-snap because my, as much as I love my older Q-snaps, they are like 17 years old and they just weren't holding tension. And I thought about, um, I bought some felt to try to put felt on it, um, underneath the clamps, but that didn't quite work out for me. So I just ended up using a coupon at Michael's and they now have they're not officially Q-snaps, I think they're called snap frames, but it's really nice. I mean, it's holding tension really well. I don't feel like it's too tight, but it's keeping everything in place and um, it looks really nice and makes it easier to work on. So anyway, this is Treasure Hunt Bookshelf. Um, let's see, what else did I work on? I worked on my um, Lady Hera by Mirabilia, so let me show you that. Here is the picture of Lady Hera. This is what she should look like um, when she's done. And let me show you what she looked like last time you saw her. And this is what she looks like now. So in the past um, week, what I've done is, so the body of the peacock was kind of cut off here with the page break. And what I did is I finished it. And then I worked more on this stone architectural piece here. I did some more back stitching, and then I did some beading because I really wanted to like the the peacock is gorgeous, and I I really wanted to see the top part of it finished. I also <laughs> I had lost that bead, and so I had to order an entirely new pack. So I was able to reattach that, and then I came down here and I beaded and beaded and beaded and everything. So next steps, I might do, well, I might be done here for a little bit 
and then I might move over and do a little bit more of the dress and some more flowers that are here and then I've got um, more of the curtain and flowers and then what I'm going to have to do is move it up so in a couple of weeks you know I'll have to roll it up a little bit more and as you can see from the pattern like the the peacock tail is no joke so I'm I'm right about here so I do have quite a bit of that um, curtain left to do before I roll it up and then the dress should be relatively simple that should be relatively simple to finish and then it's the peacock's tail that is um, that is just gorgeous but it's huge um, so I don't know when I'm going to finish this I was hoping by um, by the end of 2019 but it might not happen anyway so this is Lady Hera by Mirabilia now I also had grand plans to try to work on my Chatelaine, um, but I figured out that I need a kind of floor stand for it because it's on a really big um, scroll frame from American Dream, but it's just, it's kind of too big to hold and I really need it, um, I think it's too wide for a lap stand. So, I've been doing all kinds of like research and YouTube watching about kind of different floor stands because um, I think I need a floor stand for it. So I haven't worked on my Chatelaine in a couple of weeks, which makes me sad. Um, and my Outlander Story Keep, I also, even though it's easy stitching, I just didn't touch because I, I kind of focused on Treasure Hunt Bookshelf and wanting to get um, the fifth page done. So. Those I didn't touch. I did a weekend away um, over the long weekend and I ended up taking with me an older piece that I haven't worked on and you know it's in a couple of my really early videos but I haven't touched it in a while so um, this is this is Miss Bingley's library from Plum Street and it has, it says at the bottom, I shall be miserable if I have not an excellent library. Um, so anyway, I don't have a picture of what it looked like last time, but this is what it looks like now. And oh, <laughs> I have a friend joining me today. This is Annabelle. So anyway. Say hi, Annabelle. Oh. Go to sleep. Um, so basically, uh, this whole uh, like flower pot and the flowers, and this is a flagpole, and this top book here are all newly stitched. And I ended up stopping working on it because I ran out of this roof color. I'm not sure if I really like the roof color. It's called Swamp Water, which, eh. <laughs> but I had to order more of it and it's taking quite a while to get here. And that's another one of my orders that just, I've tried to buy it. I've tried to order it from one place. I had to order it from another place and it's taking a long time and you know, it could be back ordered. I don't know. But um, I decided to just work on the top instead of continuing the house and I have change the colors somewhat. Um, I'm planning on brightening things up and there's still a couple of books and a cardinal here and some chimney smoke and steam from the coffee and then of course the rest of the roof and house and and everything. So anyway, I've been giving this some love because I think that, well not only do I want to finish it, but I think that I might try to frame it myself. And so this is um, this is something I think I'll try to do myself. So anyway, this is Miss Bingley's library. I also have a new start. I I decided I wanted travel stitching because uh, more than a couple of times a week I go places and I wait sometimes in my car, sometimes for like an hour and a half. And occasionally I'm like, running errands and everything but I'm not always running errands and taking my you know heaven and earth design with my you know 160 colors and everything is not always the best 
and I don't always have enough light to work on it because um, I forgot to say this earlier, but it is 28 count, two over one, 10 stitch. Um, so anyway, I decided to start a travel stitching project and I've been getting more interested in um, monochromatic designs. And really it's ever since I started seeing long dog samplers, which huh, are amazing. So it's kind of sent me down the rabbit hole that is Etsy and their cross stitch patterns or cross stitch patterns that are sold on Etsy. Oh, there are so many and there are some beautiful ones. So um, what I decided to stitch for my travel stitching is called Rosette. And this is what it should look like when it's done. Except I've changed the colors, of course. Now, this summer I ended up getting this witch help linen and it's called Aqua Riviera or Riviera, Riviera Aqua, I'm not sure. But it's a really pretty color. It's really, really stiff. It, you know, it's kind of one step away from like needlepoint canvas, I think, but it's a nice color. And um, so I decided to go with that and um, and then this is the uh, snowy white or optic white from DMC, the B5200. And so I've, you know, I've just worked on this um, a little bit and it's really nice. I actually have the pattern as a PDF in Goodreader on my phone. So I know I can print it out if I want to, but um, you know, I always have my phone with me and so I always have the pattern. So I just really have to take you know, this with needle, scissors, and, um, you know, thread, my, my thread. So anyway, I now have travel stitching, and this is really nice. My stitching bag is from The Strand, one of my favorite places on earth, and I love on the other side of it, it says, there is no such thing as too many books, which I heartily agree with. Maybe someday I'll show you my library and book collection. It's kind of scattered right now, but there's a lot. Also from this uh, past weekend, I have some haul because I was at a place where, heaven, I had cross -stitch, a cross-stitch shop and then a needlepoint shop which sold silks um, local to me. And so, you know, that was my priority. <laughs> Um, so let me show you what I got. So from the um, from the cross stitch shop, I picked up some patterns, and I picked up um, Red by Mirabilia, and I've seen some really beautiful conversions on Pinterest of this from red to um, green to purple. I think I've seen um, like a deep blue one. So. I might do a conversion with this or my own conversion. I, I don't know, but I really love the pattern. And then I also got the August uh, Peridot Fairy, which is a little funky, but I, I kind of like it. And, you know, maybe I'll stitch it uh, sometime soon. And then I got, um, this is actually a German pattern called Valentine Quaker. And sorry for the glare. There we go. But anyway, this is, I'm going to butcher this, I'm sorry, uh, Wienberg or Stückedin von der Wienberg. And it's got two little birds there. And then it's basically just um, some shades of like red and deeper pink. And I really, really, really love it. So this, I, I wanna start soon. I wanna start all of them soon. Um, I also found the dreidel topiary, which I thought was really pretty. And, oh, and this is by Knotted Tree. And I found um, a Plum Street sampler um, called the Queen Sampler Elizabeth I. And I absolutely love this. It says, the end crowneth the work Elizabeth R for Elizabeth Regina. And so I have... I think I have plenty of silks in my collection now that I'll probably do this um, 
and silks and it's stitched on 40 count linen. I've never worked on 40 count so this may be the time when I actually um, I try 40 count so I really want to work on this. Um, what else did I get? Okay so that was it for new patterns. Um, I've got so you've seen this before. I've got Mirabilia's Renaissance Mermaid and I just all of a sudden got the urge that I really want to stitch this. And you know, with some kind of stressful life stuff happening right now, I said I deserve a new start. So, I have the pattern and I have the bead pack as well. And I really like that now um, the bead packs are available. And so while I was there, I was able to get um, the Cranic used. And then because it's a Renaissance mermaid based off of, you know, an Italian artist, Botticelli, um, I said, well, I should use, I should use uh, silk, right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> so I ended up um, at the needlepoint shop. I got some soie d'age and uh, I just replaced all of the DMC with, with this. It's beautiful. And um, it also uses two Karen water lilies, which are on order. And then I've ordered fabric. Um, I don't have it in yet from under the sea. And it's really 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 pretty it's opalescent so as soon as it comes in maybe by the next update or in a couple of updates I'll show you as soon as I start but um, I'm really I'm really excited to start Renaissance Mermaid and then I got a couple of other things I got um, I got a line magnifier because I've also noticed that uh, the Mirabilia patterns are now a lot smaller. So, and I do most of my stitching late at night. So between like 11 p.m. and like two, three, if I can't sleep, maybe even later. Um, so I really, you know, it's low light in the room and I have a nice outline to stitch with, but um, so I, I picked up one of these. I also picked up the smaller patterns. I, you know, I don't know how, how much I'll use this, but it's a clip that goes on a Q-snap and then it holds, um, it can hold a pattern. So I thought, oh, you know, I'll give it a try. And they're not around here, but I also got a pair of like fold up um, travel scissors for to put in my bag so I don't kind of get poked with scissors. Um, and then, this I ordered, and so I've got a really nice, huge piece of 28 count raw cashel linen that I ordered from 123 Stitch because I've been getting in the mood to um, stitch some smaller things or seasonal pieces. Um, I've had my eye on some Plum Street sampler and drawn thread. Um, welcome signs or something seasonally and I've thought a lot about you know kind of buying decorations and losing them or you know they get kind of crumpled or crinkled or broken and I thought wouldn't it be nice to have some cross stitch pieces that I can hang up seasonally and kind of switch out so anyhow I went ahead and bought this is a 36 by 55 inch piece so it's really really big and it's just nice natural linen and my goal for this is to just um, you know cut it up so I can stitch smaller pieces and I always have some of this you know hanging around and then um, at one of my local craft stores Michaels they've had a lot more cross stitch materials um, lately so Kind of looking at monochromatic designs, I picked up a piece of black Ada cloth that is 14 count and it's 15 by 18 inches, so it wouldn't do for like a really big design, but um, 
I, I've got a couple of things that maybe I want to try on this. And then I actually found 28 count white Lugana and 20 inch by 24 inch or about 50 by 60 centimeters. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that I found Lugana at a craft store because for several years, um, the cross stitch section was basically DMC with, um, you know, some needles and bobbins and needle threaders and a little bit of Ada and just really not much at all. So I've been really happy to see them carry more things because that's the only thing I have close by if I wanted to purchase something. Um, but anyway, so this is another bit of, another bit of haul. And I think over the next couple of weeks, I, um, I'm looking forward to doing more with my Lady Hera. I'm kind of feeling the urge to have maybe a final push to finish it. I'm not sure. I want to get the sixth page on my um, Treasure Hunt bookshelf done. And then I think I'm going to have to consider putting it on either using my Q-Snap extenders to kind of make it at least wider so I can continue working um, more widely or putting it on something else. And then... Um, I definitely want to finish Miss Bingley's library and again I'm looking at sort of starting some seasonal things and um, and maybe having more more of that oh and yes there's something else I um <laughs> I found a, a cross stitch app which is like a project tracker and stash tracker and I'm trying it out. It's like free for seven days and then I think it's $9.99 a year and it everything is backed up in the cloud and it can you know go across devices so you can have it on your phone or iPad or you know whatever devices you have and what I have liked about it is that I can put projects in that I'm working on. I can do kind of journal entries. I can store I can store pictures. I can you know, it even has all of the threads and flosses like preloaded. So I can go into DMC or Soie d'Alger or Weeks Dye Works and I can just like click off what I have and then I have my inventory in my phone. So I haven't done a lot of loading because I've, I've kind of been stitching. Um, but that's another project that I want to maybe get done. Is have all of that in and I'm thinking about reorganizing my DMC um, threads because I've I've always bobbinated all of my flosses and but I've had separate boxes for different projects and then I find that either I have to buy multiple um, like duplicates of my DMC's or I have to remember which box they're in and now I'm thinking about going to a system where I have just two or more kind of large boxes and all of my DMCs in order. And let me show you. So this is one of my boxes and then I've got a smaller box which is almost full but um, because I've got, I'm thinking about starting some more projects, I might get another really big box and you know buy the DMC flosses that I'm going to need and just have like two big boxes so that Whenever I'm stitching a DMC piece, I, you know, I just go to the same place for my threads and I don't, um, I don't try to make separate boxes. So we'll see if that works. But anyway, um, lots of exciting plans and I'm hopefully going to be back next week for another update. I hope you guys get lots of stitching done and I will see you soon. So bye. Thanks.